Welcome everybody. Thank you all for coming. We're excited about giving you all an inside look at the rail feasibility study, the progress we're making, and the next steps that are coming ahead. A little bit about Groundwork. Uh, it's a great nonprofit organization. I've been with the organization for 23 years, most of my adult life. And uh, we used to call it Michigan Land Use Institute for a number of years. Some of you still know us as MLUI. Uh, we are all about community resilience, and we work in various areas. We work in clean energy and local food systems and land use and transportation. And um, we are talking about rail because it fits directly with our resilient community's mission, which is based on a clean environment and a strong economy and building community. So if you think about public transportation, which we are just big advocates for across the board, walkability, biking, uh, beta bus service and trains, you know, it really is a, a beautiful connection of a cleaner way of getting around, cleaner on the environment. It's really good for the economy to have public transit stops in our downtowns. If we are successful in revitalizing rail service from Traverse City to Ann Arbor, the economic potential of downtown development in this community, in Cadillac, in Mount Pleasant, in Owasso, in Ann Arbor is absolutely enormous. The uh, amount of economic energy that would come to this region if we offered another way of getting here and another way of getting around town I think is hard to measure and, and we, we're going to try to measure it a little bit in this study but um, we're excited because it is a true connection of environmental protection and economic development and it really does build community you know you, if you're uh, familiar with train rides and, and public transit you do kind of connect with people it's a different way of traveling you're not one person in a car going down state, you're a community of people on a train together and you get off at the filling station and you hang out there and you really kind of connect with, with what makes this place so special, which is our strong communities. My colleague Jim Brookbauer uh, is a tremendous guy who does a lot of things at our organization. He's the deputy director of Groundwork and has been with us for a number of years and has done just about everything in the organization. And he does it all very well, but I have to say that in Jim's heart, he is a transportation advocate. So, you know, we're trying to create space for Jim to stay on top of this initiative because this is who he is. You know when you get to know someone and, and you see what they're really about? Well, Jim, deep down, is about transportation options and thriving downtown. So, uh, so this idea has been talked about for quite a while now. I think it's been, I think we discovered today it was over a decade. Uh, ago that someone said, hey, you know, we've got these tracks over here, uh, you know, we should do something. We, we see these freight trains coming in and out of Traverse City, uh, we should explore uh, what it will take to get passengers on those trains. And we've been interested in this for a, for a while. Hans mentioned a few of the reasons, but uh, we feel like we have a unique situation here because the tracks between Ann Arbor and Traverse City are still in place, they're still owned by the state, and they're still in pretty good shape. And you know, when you take out a big transportation project like this, some of the biggest costs come from you know, purchasing the right of way and putting down the infrastructure. And with this, those two things are already in place. So we feel like we have a really unique opportunity here. Uh, there's also a lot of public support for this idea. You know, back in 2011, uh, the state was creating a statewide rail plan. And as part of that process, they went around the state and asked people, you know, what do you want to see with passenger rail around the state? And the number one priority that people said was, hey, we want to see a train connection to Traverse City. We want to be able to get from downstate to Traverse City. And uh, the, you know, when they had the meeting in Traverse City, more people attended the Traverse City meeting than anywhere else around the state. So that really opened up the eyes of MDOT to say, hey, you know, let's really explore this. Since we have the infrastructure, since we still own this this rail line, and there's so much interest, let's really uh, explore this. So, man, we had probably, it seems like a couple of years of meetings with Great Lakes Central, it's a company that's leasing the tracks right now from the state, and MDOT's Office of Rail. And, you know, they said, hey, if you really want to get this done in 10 years, the first step is to uh, do a feasibility study. So let's just take a look at the track conditions right now and see what it's really gonna take to get trains going, you know, 60, 70 miles per hour, and let's see how many people would actually jump on those trains and how many people would pay so we can come up with a business plan. So we said, okay, uh, let's get some money together. Uh, we 
we applied for a federal grant, a transit planning grant that uh, allowed us to get uh, some funding to hire a consultant. We also got some matching funds from some of the communities along the line, including in Traverse City. So uh, Mayor Crothers and Commissioner Werner, thanks for that. We had some, some matching funds there. Uh, Petoskey and uh, Washtenaw County as well, and, and Elma, the city of Elma contributed a little bit too. And uh, there was also some state funding that was available for this too. And that allowed us to hire some consultants. This, this team that's here today, Thames, uh, they're out of Frederick, Maryland. They're just a, an excellent uh, team of rail experts. Uh, they've worked with MDOT quite a bit. Did you say 40? It's been 40 well, years that you've been here. 81, that was when we started. Yeah. 81, you had your first project with MDOT where they uh, suggested 110 mile per hour trains between Chicago and Detroit, and now that's actually happening. Uh, and you know we, we chose this team of consultants because uh, a their experience with MDOT but also because you know they have a very sophisticated way of looking at the demographics in communities and their travel patterns and estimating you know, how many people would would jump on a train if they had the opportunity to and how much they'd be willing to pay uh, based on the train times and so uh, it's been just just great working with this team uh, they're about five to five to six months into the study as we started in de uh, December so it's uh, about four months into the study and we're expecting that to wrap up in May or June and then we'll do a big you know public presentation hopefully this summer or, or late summer early fall uh, but we wanted to just give a preview give kind of an update on, on what's happening and uh, invite the consultants to just share some of their initial findings. And Alex, you want to share a few of your Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for inviting us up here. Well, we began with a certain amount of skepticism about the potential for rail in this corridor, largely because we just went to the demographics and looked at them and I'm sure the man knows, you know, you're quite a small city. So the idea that actually we could build a corridor uh, into northern Michigan uh, from Ann Arbor or Detroit was something that until we came here and saw the town, we were kind of a little bit skeptical about. Once we came here, we were sort of totally bowled over by the nature of, the, of this city and Patowski. So uh, uh, basically we think that uh, you know, uh, it's not quite what we thought it was, and certainly a city that swells to half a million people in the summer uh, and has the volumes of tourists that you have is certainly a city that has potential. What we can see is that, you know, there's something like about 3.8 million visitors a year, according to the uh, studies that have been done by the city in Traverse City, and Patowski, we're basically looking at about 2.5 million. I don't know if any of you kind of look at the statistics, but if you look at 6 million visitors, uh, I think Disney World is pretty happy with 20 million visitors. So, you know, 6 million visitors to an area like this, absolutely staggering and uh, really quite surprising. So, large number of visitors. The other thing about it was that the visitor population is growing very rapidly. When we looked at the statistics of what was happening to growth, basically it had been growing at 4% a year. And we kind of said to ourselves, wow, that's going to take a lot of infrastructure for the, uh, to support that in the future if it's going to continue to grow at those kind of rates. And even then we think there may be some constraints to growth associated with it. And so uh, essentially what happened was, if we go to the next slide, we can see this is the projected growth. So if we basically even assume 3% rather than 4% growth, what we're saying is that over the next, from the 6.3 million we're looking at today, and the red is Travis City, and the blue is Patowski, basically we can see that by 2045, you'll be looking at a doubling of your, of your visitor numbers. That's huge. And obviously there's gonna have to be a lot of thought given to whether or not you can do that, or what infrastructure you're going to need, what uh, development you're going to be able to accommodate. But I think everybody's agreed that there's going to be faster growth of visitors into Traverse City in the future. It has in the past. We've only used 3%, and essentially we're going to make that a central case. Obviously, it could be higher, 
the state itself economic growth is at two percent so essentially you know three percent isn't really uh, too big an increase over what is happening at the state level next slide um, in terms of the corridor you've seen the corridor you've seen all the cities that are along that uh, corridor that we were thinking of for our stations. One of the things we're trying to do is identify what type of train service you should basically have in the future. And so essentially we're looking at three kind of levels of service. Uh, something like the Alaskan train, which is a 60 mile an hour train, runs up in Alaska. Maybe some of you have been up there on holiday and sort of seen the train service they run. Uh, whether or not we could up to that to a 90 mile an hour, which would use these faster passenger type locomotives and uh, more, more sort of consistent uh, uh, consists for the trains, or whether we can actually go to 110, uh, which would give us a very real uh, attractive run and make it highly competitive with the automobile, uh, which would be very, a very uh, exciting thing to do because people really do love their cars in Michigan. Uh, as a transplant to this country, and as a, you know, I always describe myself as a Michigan boy, even though I was born in Gloucestershire in England, the values of the Michigan people are so like mine. Uh, basically, uh, you, know, you know, the younger generation in particular are not as excited about being Miss Steve McQueen in a Mustang as I am, and they basically, <laughs> Uh, want to sit in trains and play with their electronic stuff. So something like this would really be a very competitive kind of technology to be able to put in place. Let me go to the next one. So the first thing we have done is actually compare the kinds of uh, service that might be offered with these different types of trains to driving your car, because at the end of the day, we've got to decide how it competes with the automobile because most of your folks are coming in by automobile. We know there's some fairly rich people who fly in, but basically a lot of your guys are coming from the south of Michigan are flying in. And essentially what we find is that, for instance, from Ann Arbor to TC, if we were to just put in a 60 mile an hour service, it would be about a five hour haul. And those of you who have driven know that basically four hours and 40 from Ann Arbor is not a bad time at all to get up here. Uh, allows you to stop and fill up the gas or basically uh, get a coffee or something, which we all seem to need these days. So essentially, what we're saying is that 60 miles an hour, we're not quite competitive with the automobile. If we go 90, we would actually be very, very competitive with the automobile, be very similar. But if we go 110, we would actually be able to be driving. And if you put yourself in that situation, then basically you're going to find a lot of people are going to switch out to the train, especially if we offer family fares, kind of discounts that railroads offer, so kids travel free or, you know, that kind of thing. It will be very attractive for families to do that and come up, and certainly individuals. So we think that, you know, essentially the competitive situation is pretty good. If we look at Petowski, then basically we're uh, a little less competitive simply because of the way the interstate rolls up the city and it's less of a drive from the interstate into the, into the town. But nonetheless, we can say with some certainty that if we can go 110, then we can be competitive with the automobile. And that's something that really you need to do if you're going to have a rail service. No point having a rail service is nobody's going to get on it. And the job of a company on a car is, is to really understand how many people will get on it and be able to underline a business case that shows what the kind of revenues and costs associated with that will be. We are right in the middle at the moment of uh, estimating the operating costs and the uh, ridership revenues associated with the system. But just looking at the basic numbers, what we're saying is this is looking quite uh, exciting and interesting. And when we get the numbers, we think they're going to show that there is a very good case for basically uh, introducing a rail service into, into uh, Traverse City and Pantowski. So essentially, uh, we think that you have got a very strong competitive position. Um, the work that we're going to do in the next four, six weeks is going to allow us to complete the study 
we'll have all the operating costs and, and uh, revenues for the system. So we'll be able to do a financial analysis for the business plan. Equally, we'll be able to do the economic benefits that flow from it. And we'll basically show you what are the economic benefits to the community of basically putting in a rail service. Our job is to give you a very straightforward, independent, objective evaluation of it because we don't want you doing something that wouldn't pay in the long run. Our reputation is built on the idea that if we do a study, basically it's going to be something that will be turn out in reality to be exactly what we've got. And essentially what we're thinking is that this is looking good. We've got a few more things we have to do before we can finalize it. But essentially we feel that we are you know, at a point where we can at least say we think there's a great opportunity here and our recommendation will be, you know, assuming things turn out the way we kind of thinking they might, that we can make a positive recommendation to you and that essentially, uh, you know, argue the case for basically making this both in financial and economic terms. And I think with that, that's well, about as far as we could go, but we'd be glad to answer any questions that you might have with respect to uh, what we've done so far. There's a lot of number crunching going on right now on the capital costs and the operations costs. And, um, you know, we're verifying numbers with the Michigan Department of Transportation, Great Lakes Central, who's the company who's leasing the tracks. I wish we could share some numbers. We can't right now yet, uh, but we will be able to soon. Um, but uh, so we're still doing a lot of a lot of research on that. Uh, we're also talking about uh, how the increment, how the service could be built incrementally. So uh, right now we can run trains on almost the entire stretch of tracks on a special event basis. So they're called excursion trains, and you may have heard about this uh, organization called the Steam Railroading Institute that runs these fall color tour trains up to Petoskey sometimes from Mount Pleasant to Cadillac. Uh, in the summer, and they're running trains on a special event basis. So it's not regularly scheduled service, but it's for this kind of excursion basis. And we think that, you know, as, as soon as we could get some of these special event trains in Traverse City, we can start showing people that, hey, you know, this is what train service could look like, and we could start testing different uh, financial models and testing different service types, and then start building uh, service as demand and interest grows from there until we get to uh, regular passenger service. So that's something else we're exploring too uh, as part of this, this whole study. Mm -hmm.